want to welcome you to worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Los Angeles. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. This is the third Sunday of the celebration of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is April the 26th, 2020, and we welcome you to join us today as we celebrate the victory that Christ has given to us. This morning, uh, we have a wonderful opportunity to hear from Howard Kessa as he plays a selection by Yerma. Church, it's been several weeks now since we have, quote unquote, been sheltered in place, not able to have what we call a traditional worship experience as a people of God. But we rejoice that God has given us what we call technology. He's given us the social media. He's given us means by which we can continue to be the people of God, worshiping and praising our God and thanking God for the victory he has given us, especially in this Easter journey in which we're in. 
You remember last week we talked about our uh, victory cheer or our salvation cheer that we have for the world. Remember, I, I encourage you to say it along with me. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that we will continue that cheer, we'll continue that celebratory word as we go out and do the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God says his word shall not return void. And we know that as we read his word and inwardly digest his word, that it blesses us, that it strengthens us, that it guides us every day in our lives. And I pray as we worship God this morning, as you hear the word of God, that you'll be strengthened in your faith, that you remember that our God has not forsaken us, and that you remember that God says that he will lead and guide and direct our paths in peace every day. Bless you as you worship our Lord this, this morning in spirit and in truth. Nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd, and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am the righteous one. for sin I am your redeemer the beginning and the end I am I am I am I am I am Jehovah I am your king I am Messiah offspring I am your high priest and I am the Christ I am the resurrection and I am the life I am oh I am I am I am recognize that in our lives as the people of God that somehow regardless of God's grace and mercy and regardless of how many blessing God pours into our lives somehow we're not able to always follow through as we should and so this morning I would ask us to remember that as we come to God and we confess to him our failures our inability to keep his word that we put our faith in Jesus Christ as we confess our sins to him and as we allow the power of our confession to him to uplift us as we hear that we are absolved from those because of the victory of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ who paid for our sins once and for all on the cross of Calvary. Lend me your heart, lend me your ears as we share these words of confession together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and loving God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into our world that we might be saved from the weight of our sins. You have given us your Holy Spirit so that we'll be strengthened to tell others of this great gift of salvation. We now confess that we have failed to share this good news with others as we should. We have sinned against you, O oh God, in our thoughts, our words, and in our deeds. And we ask you, O oh God, to forgive us to shower your grace and your mercy upon us. 
We know that your love will cover a multitude of our sins. Give us the joy, O God, of belonging to you and to each other in the body of Christ. And help us, O God, to support and to strengthen each other as we reach out to those who do not know of your great love, your peace, and eternal hope. We pray this for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, as we have prayed this prayer, as we have laid out before God our failings, I want to remind you today that your sins are forgiven. That Jesus Christ went to the cross to pay for your sins once and for all. And so now as a called and ordained servant of his word, I announce the grace of God unto you and forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Walk free in the victory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, as we go into prayer this morning, we want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ in this Easter season. We have so many things to be praying about. First and foremost is to pray that the church, the body of Christ around the world, will remember that Jesus Christ is in control, God the Father is in control. And so in the midst of this pandemic, that we will lift up the church so the church is able to tell others to have hope, to have peace, to have the assurance that God has not left us and that God will bring us through. That's the first prayer we have. The second prayer we have uh, is for um, the students who are trying to finish up an academic year, uh, especially those students who are anticipating graduating without an official graduation ceremony. Uh, we lift up the students in the classrooms and the teachers and their professors during this time as well. Uh, we also lift up our city, the city of Los Angeles, as we continue to go through this process, our leaders in this city, uh, as well as uh, those in charge of uh, managing uh, all of our first responders as well, not only here but, of course, around the world who are giving their lives, our doctors and nurses, EMT people, all those individuals who are on the front lines assisting in this matter. We also want to lift up those who are sheltering in place, uh, those who are, are seeking God's blessings and strength in their lives as they go through the financial concerns they have, the health concerns that they have, uh, the family matters that they have, that they will be able to put their trust in the Lord, that God will bless them and keep them as they shelter in place. We also want to lift up all of our medical uh, professionals who are part of the CDC and those CDC representatives around the world who are working together, our various scientists and medical professionals who are looking, of course, for the answer, who are looking for a resolve to this matter. Uh, we pray God's blessings upon them. And then specifically, we pray for our congregation, St. Paul Lutheran Church, the Lighthouse on West Adams, as we continue to celebrate our 95th year of ministry that we will carry out this work that God has given to us faithfully as we continue to share our time, our talents, and our treasures to be sure that the work of the Lord goes on in spite of what we are experiencing in our daily lives. And finally, we pray for those who are grieving. We know that many lives have been lost around the world, and we know that many families have been impacted by the loss of life, and we ask God's peace upon them, comfort to be upon them as well, but specifically for members of our congregation who continue to grieve, we think about our sister Dudana Watt. Uh, we think about the Nichols family, Stacy and Lise Nichols, who are grieving the loss of an aunt. Uh, we think about other members as well as they reflect upon their loved ones not being here, that God will give them a perfect peace uh, that surpasses all our human understanding. Let's go to the Lord in prayer if we can. Heavenly Father, we come with our hearts and our lies fully open to you and we come to you Lord God on behalf of this world in which we live Lord in the midst of this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus Lord God we know that the answer is in your hands you have promised us as your sons and your daughters Lord that you should never leave us and you should never forsake us and so we know that you are moving in the midst of this pandemic to Lord God, to not only bring healing and strength and unity to your people, but to show us, Lord God, how to praise you, how to thank you in the midst of the storms of life, and to see if we will be as faithful to you as you have been to us. Lord, we do pray that you will be with those who are hurting, the loss of life, Lord God. We'll be with those who are ill, 
that you would heal them according to your will, that you would be with those who are hospitalized, those who are at home. Lord, whatever it may be, may your healing spirit, Lord, go before and give them strength and encouragement to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also come on behalf of our students from the classroom and their teachers and professors. Lord, what an interesting academic year for them to not be able to finish in a classroom setting with their teachers and professors. But we know, Lord God, that you will work things out. We thank you for the technology of this world that you've given to us, that we may be able, Lord God, to use this technology to continue the education process. We pray for dedication and commitment on behalf of our students, and we pray for commitment on behalf of our teachers and, Lord God, our professors, as they carry out their responsibility to be sure that they continue to shape the hearts and the minds of our young people as they prepare for what you have for them, Lord God, in the future. Lord, in thy mercy, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the city of Los Angeles uh, that as we work as a city to manage this epidemic, Lord God, that you would be with those in official positions, giving them wisdom, giving them insight, giving them courage, giving them boldness, but more importantly, Father, giving them faith to know that through them, as you work through them, that you will work things out according to your will. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord, we lift up uh, the country of Haiti to you, Lord God, and we ask your blessings upon that nation as they are now being impacted by this pandemic. Lord, we know that this nation is already struggling. We pray, Lord, for your guidance and direction to be with the church there as the church helps to, sh helps to shape, Lord God, the hearts of the people to lift up holy hands unto you and ask you, Lord God, for all the grace, all the mercy, all the peace, and all the healing you can provide. Lord, in thy mercy. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come on behalf, Lord God, of uh, those medical professionals who are first responders, our doctors, our nurses, our EMTs, our firefighters, Lord God, who are responding to this epidemic. Lord, we pray for your safety, first and foremost, and your grace and mercy to be around them, Lord God, but also, Heavenly Father, keeping them healthy and, uh, and well, that they may continue to function in their various roles. We want to say, Lord, thank you for the CDC and for all the scientists, Lord God, around the world who are working together. Lord, we know the answer can be found when you allow it to happen. And so we put ourselves, Lord God, at your feet, and we ask you to make it so according to your will. Lord, in thy mercy. Lord God, and finally, we pray for our St. Paul family as they are sheltering in place, that you would strengthen them, Lord God, in their word, that you would remind them that the power of prayer is a wonderful gift given to you, given to them from you, and that you remind them, Lord God, that we're one with you and we're one with each other, and that regardless of our distance, Heavenly Father, we remain our oneness in you because Jesus is our rock and our redeemer. He is our Messiah and he is our king. And with him, we stand boldly in our faith as one body in Jesus Christ. Lord, in thy mercy. Saints, I ask you now to join me in the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he taught his church. The words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you as you continue your life of prayer and meditation as you're in the word of God, allowing the word of God to sustain you, especially in these times. God bless. Now, it's time for us to go into the word. This is the third week in our Easter journey. And as you may remember, for those who have their church year calendars at home, that we have three lessons that really bless our journey in this time. The first lesson is coming, of course, from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. It's a portion of uh, Peter's sermon to the church. I would ask you that during this, um, uh, during this Easter season that you really take some time, church, and read through the Acts of the Apostles so that you can see and be able to identify with uh, Peter and the other apostles and disciples who laid out this book of the Bible 
to encourage us as a church, not just a church 2,000, 20 years ago, but a church that is active and doing the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. So our first lesson will be coming from Acts chapter 2, verses 29 to 41. And then our second lesson will be coming from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 25. So you can prepare yourselves for that. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 25. And then finally, we'll have our gospel text for this Sunday, the Emmaus Road text, very familiar to many of us, taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through verse 35. May God bless us as we hear his word, as we inwardly digest his word, and as we live out his word in our life each day. The Lord's grace be with you. As we look at the book of Acts, we are looking at the second half of Peter's sermon on Pentecost Day. And this is the answer to the question that the world asks, what does the resurrection really mean? We're looking at Acts 2, and we will hit verses 29 to 41. After talking about David's prophecy about the Messiah, Peter continues, Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has now poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. This same apostle, Peter, would later write to the church and talk about the real meaning, the power of the gospel. And so we turn to 1 Peter 1. We'll be looking at verses 13 to 25. And looking at what the gospel is and what it has done, it answers the question, so what? Now what do we do? Here's Peter's answer, starting at verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace that to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. 
He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers and sisters, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail, word of the Lord stands forever. This is the word of the Lord. For the reading of the gospel, we turn into the scriptures according to St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they walked, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in, those, in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more... It is that the third day since all this took place, in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women said, had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter to glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus Jesus acted as he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our heart burning with within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? 
they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem, and there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simeon. Then the two told what had happened on the day and how Jesus recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. After hearing such a powerful word from our Lord this morning, we have to admit we have a gracious God. And we like to always let him know that we acknowledge that he's a gracious, loving, and merciful God. And so we know it is God the Father who created us uh, in his divine, righteous, and holy image. We know that it is God the Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world as true God and true man to give us victory over sin, over death, and over the grave. And we also know that God the Holy Spirit is present amongst us today, the paraclete, leading, guiding, and directing our paths in the ways of Jesus Christ as we continue to carry out his mission. And so this morning, church, let's join our voices and our hearts together, regardless of our locations, and let's confess our common faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is my confession and belief. Amen. At this time, we'll hear from Michael Norfleet as he blesses us this morning, and also our vicar, Vicar John Enoch Burris, as they bring our hearts great joy with this beautiful selection before we go deeper into God's holy divine word this morning, going back to the Acts of the Apostles and seeing how Peter's sermon applies to us in our lives as the people of God. Sent down from glory Many things you were on earth A holy king, a carpenter Because you are the living word Bread of heaven Sent down from glory Many things you were on earth A holy king a carpenter, you are the living word. Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. Oh, you are the living word. Down from glory, many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word.
time I truly believed that I could do it on my own But all that I found at the end of that road Is that concept for me was all wrong But I found a savior who turned me around And he pushed his love on me and I have a trust in him until my last heartbeat. Some put their trust in earthly possessions, but in the end, it won't won't bring. Standing, but with my whole heart, here's what I'll do. I will trust, trust in the name of the Lord. In the name, trust in the name of the Lord. Of the Lord, Lord, I will. I will trust. I will trust in, in you. I will trust. Trust in. your trust in things that will perish and ultimately fade away because even with family and friends all around you will find yourself alone and dismay because their best intentions they're only human believe me when I say trust in the Lord he is worth Savior Jesus Christ this morning, church. The uh, apostle Peter made it so very, very clear in these words. And after we hear these words again, we're to go into prayer together. Sing what was to come. 
He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realms of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus alive, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out on what we now see and hear. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, our text. So we thank you that we're able to trust in you more than anything else in this world. We thank you for showing us your unconditional love, your grace, and your mercy, your divine plan for us by allowing your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to come into this world of ours and deliver us back into a pure, righteous, and holy relationship and to be truly our Lord and our Messiah. Thank you for your holy word that guides our every footsteps along this earthly journey. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that opens our hearts and open our minds to better understand, Lord, your will, your plans, your desire for us and how we are to live. Shower upon us, Lord, all that we need through your word and by the power of your spirit to trust you more than anything else in this life. Join me, church, and say amen and amen. You know, church, I know all of us like a good movie, and we like to take advantage of that. Sometimes uh, before this pandemic, we were able to actually go out to the movies and have a good time. I also know that we can sit home now and, and watch our cable television or watch Netflix at home, and we enjoy a good story, a good storyline. I know we also enjoy good sermons, you know, like the one you have from church or that you hear online from different places or you hear a pastor or, the, or apostle or uh, someone bringing you, Lord God, what you need. Uh, and so we also know that you also enjoy uh, when you hear messages uh, or speeches from, from people. And those speeches also bless your heart and bless your soul. Well, this morning we have a sermon, a speech, a motivational message from the Apostle Peter to the church. Not the church just 2,020 years ago, but to you and to me, the church today, as to how we are to carry out the work of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have this message, as Peter tells the church, because we have the truth. And by having the truth, we can tell others about this truth. For instance, we can tell people that it's true that Jesus Christ was born at Bethlehem as true God and true man, and he came to us to be our Savior. We can say that. That is true. We know it happened. We know that it is real. And we can say it's true that our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ grew up in stature and he went to teach in the temples and, and that for 33 years he performed miracle after miracle after miracle, raising the dead to life. That's truth that we can tell those around us. We can tell the truth about Jesus suffering, about Jesus dying. We can tell that he went to the cross to pay for our sins once and for all because that's all true. We can tell this true message to those around us. And finally, we can tell a true message that Jesus Christ did descend into hell on Good Friday, that he stayed in the grave. And then on the third day, he rose from the grave victorious because it's true. That's why we can tell the world, we can shout to the world around us, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, hallelujah. Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, hallelujah. That's true. That's the truth of the message of the gospel we can tell the world around us. That's the message that Peter is giving to the church there and giving to us now today. This world needs to know where the truth is. And church, we have the truth of God's holy, divine, and inerrant word. The other truth is, as Peter lays it out in our text, is the power that comes in the waters of holy baptism. 
Many of you who are looking at our YouTube station today, you've been baptized. And you are baptized in the name of a triune God. You are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Upon your baptism, whenever that was, where you were a baby in your parents' arms, or you were an adult uh, in your life when you made that decision to be baptized and to come into the truth and the knowledge of God, that baptism happened in such a powerful way, and it is true. Upon your baptism, you receive the gift of God's Spirit. And that Spirit that you have within you then lives on day after day. The truth that comes in the knowledge of holy baptism is also knowing that holy baptism is a free gift. It costs us nothing to tell that truth, to share that truth, to share with the world that the baptism and the relationship with Jesus Christ is all free. All free. And with that free gift, you get earthly blessings today that you ask God for. You have eternal blessings waiting for you in the kingdom of heaven when God calls you by name. And you have blessings that are multi-generational blessings. You remember? Somebody took you to church, your grandmother, grandfather. You went to Sunday school, you went to church, you were raised in a church. And if you didn't, you knew about the process of being able to have these blessings in your life. And so today, you can say, I am a, a body, I'm a part of the body of Christ today because someone cared enough to give me something free that is true, the gift of baptism. And now, many generations in your family are blessed to have the truth of God's word on their hearts, living out the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every day. Saints, the other truth for us, knowing that we are believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is the truth that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit in us, living in us each and every day. What is truth about that? Well, the Holy Spirit has responsibility living in and around us. The Holy Spirit leads, guides, and directs us, church, in carrying the truth of God's word into the world so that we can have more people baptized, more people in the word of God, more people understanding that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The truth of God's word is there, and the Holy Spirit also protects us. The Holy Spirit surrounds us so that not even Satan can harm us in our lives. The Holy Spirit protects us from our enemies who are always after us. That is truth and that is free for us as the people of God. And finally, the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom, imparts wisdom, pours wisdom into our head and into our hearts, church, the kind of wisdom that we need from God's word to live our everyday life according to his will. When we're in his word, his word is speaking to us in our hearts and our minds. That is truth for us as the people of God. We praise and thank God for the apostle Peter and all of the apostles and disciples who wrote the word of God so that we have the truth of his word in our lives every day. This is a message that we can live with, that we can stand on. Well, you know, church, there's always the questions of life, right? We have the big question, why this coronavirus, why, why COVID-19, why so many lives have been lost, why this, why that, why I don't have this, why I don't have that, why is this happening to me, why has this happened to us? All those questions of this journey of life help us to realize something that's very, very important. We still have a purpose when we know our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a purpose in this life as believers who understand why Jesus came into this world, why Jesus suffered and died, why Jesus descended into hell, why Jesus rose victorious on the third day. We have the answers because we as believers know our purpose. Our purpose, first and foremost, is to lead others to these free gifts 
that God has given to us, church. He's given us the free gift of his word, the free gift of the waters of holy baptism, the free gift of his body and blood, the free gift of a relationship with him. This salvation message, we want to be able to take out to the world around us, church. This free gift allows us to be examples for those around us who are still struggling, asking those questions without having sound answers. We are examples to them because we're believers who stand with Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Messiah, as uh, Peter said in our text today. As believers, we are role models for the world around us. I didn't say we were perfect. I said that we are role models for the world around us. So they understand that our baptismal faith and the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have in our lives today allows us to share with them all these free gifts that God has given to us through our Lord and through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Saints, we need to be examples for the world around us. Just think about your household. Who can you be a better example to in your home? Think about your neighbors, the one across the way, the one down the street, the one around the corner. How can we be as believers a better example of faith? Think about the person that you meet in the marketplace. Think about the person you're passing on the street. How can we be a better example for them as believers who know the truth of God's word, who have the concrete relationship with our baptismal faith? How can we be examples for them? Think about the person that you meet along the way on the street who looks lost and without purpose and without direction. Don't you think it's important that we will be able to Share with them what they need. We have it. It is not just for us. It is truly for every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth. Church, let me encourage us during this Easter season to take our time and read through the Acts of the Apostles and be blessed by the work of the early church as it then expands the work of the gospel, sharing the free gift of baptism, sharing the free gift of the Holy Spirit, expanding the word of God around the world, letting people know the power of the empty cross and the empty tomb. Read through the book of Acts and allow the truth of God's word to flow through you to others around you that others may have and fully understand their purpose as we do. God has us in his care. We belong to the Lord. And I pray that the truth of God's word, the power of our baptismal faith, will carry us through, regardless of what we face every day. Here's what we know to be true. God said he would never leave us and never forsake us. Amen? Amen. God said he'll be with us always, even to the end of the ages. Amen? Amen. God says he knows every hair on the top of our heads. Amen? God says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Amen? And God said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Let's stand on that truth. This is a truth that will carry us through today, through tomorrow, through the rest of our lives as we allow God to bless us so that we could be a blessing to others with the truth of his word. For he is our Lord and he is our Messiah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank and praise you that we're able to connect to your holy, divine, and inerrant word today. And we praise and thank you for the Apostle Peter and all of the other disciples and apostles who took the time to allow your spirit to use them as the scribes of your word. We are benefactors of that today. And we thank you that in this uh, resurrection season, in this Easter journey in which we're on, we're able to shout, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, hallelujah, amen, as our victory cheer so the world around us will know that the truth is right before them 
And the relationship with the truth, Jesus Christ, is always waiting for them. Use us as living examples and vessels of your spirit that others may know you as we do. We pray this in your holy, divine, righteous, and victorious name. Amen and amen. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, my heart is yours. It all belongs to you. I'll give you all the glory. Yes, I'll love you. I worship and adore. I'm going to love you more. Oh, Lord, how much I really do love you. You, Lord, I do love you. I love you, Lord, I do love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I do love you. Lord, I want to say that I love you. Cause you are worthy, Lord. 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 Cause I love you. of the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you as you share the truth of his word. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From home let's sing together the words of the doxology. I want you to know that your church, the body of Christ here at St. Paul Lutheran Church, remains fervent in prayer. We remain committed to carrying out the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is our 95th year of ministry uh, here as the Lighthouse on West Adams. And we just ask you to stay connected to the Word, uh, to continue to be faithful in the sharing of your time, your talents, and your treasures with the work of Jesus Christ and to be able to go out every day in some form, whether it be through social media or physically, and be able to share the truth of God's word with those around us. Because ultimately we have one main purpose in life, and that is to tell others about Jesus. We pray God's blessings upon you as you continue to worship God every day of your lives, in spirit and in truth. We're here for you. You know how to communicate with us. Please do so. God bless you and God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.
carpenter, you are the living word. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter.